Let us consider gas contained in a vessel with a displaceable piston. Its state is characterized by the three main parameters – pressure, volume and temperature. The dependence of two values at a fixed third one provides us with three gas laws. An English physicist, Robert Boyle, and a Frenchman, Ed Marriott, studied the connection between pressure and volume at constant temperature. A French scientist, Jacques Charles, had established the dependence of pressure on temperature at constant volume. An Englishman, John Dalton, and a Frenchman, Joseph-Louis Gay-Lussac, had studied the connection between volume and temperature at constant pressure. We'll start our experiments with reproducing boyle marriott's law, which shows the connection between gas pressure and its volume at constant temperature. We connect a large syringe to a pressure gauge and slowly compress the air inside the syringe, decreasing the volume by 10 milliliters at a time, and examine the pressure rising. All the points of the obtained graph rest on a hyperbolic curve, which means that the pressure volume product remained unchanged. The result may be explained on the basis of the molecular kinetic theory. Gas consists of a huge number of minute, fast-moving molecules. Gas pressure appears due to the fact that molecules hit the vessel walls continuously and impart their momentum to them. So what happens to pressure when volume changes? Imagine there's been a double change in volume. In this case, the molecule concentration has doubled, which means that molecules hit the vessel wall twice as often, so pressure doubles as well. It's important to note that gas temperature was constant, that is why molecules' mean energy didn't change. We will now reproduce Charles's law, which shows the dependence of pressure on temperature. We stop a metallic vessel securely with a rubber plug, so that gas volume within it would not change. We insert a pressure gauge into the stopper. The air within the vessel is in contact with the atmosphere, so its pressure equals the atmospheric one. The vessel is immersed in icy water in a pan and a temperature sensor is put there too. We shut off the valve and start heating the water. The air inside the vessel also gets heated. This graph shows that when temperature rises, the air pressure inside the vessels increases. We can see that experimental points all rest on a straight line. If we continue this line into low temperature region, the air pressure will equal zero at approximately minus 270 degrees Celsius. How can it be explained? If pressure equals zero, it means that gas molecule movement has ceased and we have reached the lowest possible temperature. Of course, real gases get liquefied before they reach such temperature. The scale by which temperature is reckoned from absolute zero and not from the point of ice melting is called Kelvin scale. To get Kelvin scale temperature value, one has to add 273 degrees to Celsius temperature value. Gay-Lussac's law reveals the connection between volume and temperature at constant pressure. Again, we immerse a vessel in cold water and connect it via a tube to a calibrated cylinder, with a tight piston moving inside it. We shut off the valve and start heating the water. Upon heating, the air inside the vessel expands and pushes out the piston. In our installation, the piston's friction on the cylinder's walls is low. That's why the air pressure inside the vessel stays close to the atmospheric one. An ultrasound sensor measures the piston's shifting and we convert it into volume increase. Here's a graph that demonstrates the experimentally obtained dependence of gas volume on its temperature. The temperature on the graph is marked in degrees Kelvin, reckoned from absolute zero. According to the molecular kinetic theory, gas volume has to increase proportionally to its absolute temperature. But our graph goes down with the temperature rising. 
It is connected, first of all, with the fact that the air inside the calibrated cylinder cools down to room temperature so that mean temperature within the system is lower than the one shown by the thermometer in the water.